Hello and welcome to another Bolt Action Deep Dive. My name is Zorvix. Today I wanted to discuss some unit discrepancies that I've noticed in Bolt Action. As always, all these images on this uh, presentation are from Warlord's website. And these are going to explore some of the uh, preface that a rifleman is a rifleman, where a 10-point rifleman is the same for all units for all nations. However, that can increase or decrease by 30% based on whether or not they are veteran or inexperienced. And that's always not the case. In this first example, uh, just we'll do a top 10 here. The Guastatori Support Group from the Italian Army in the New Italian Soft Underbelly book, however, this unit has the LMG and the mortar, so it's kind of got some of that nice supporting elements to it. However, a regular is 10 points per man, but the veteran has an extra cost of 0.3 points per guy. That's so uh, super unusual for that extra one point bump from the total cost of the unit. The Panzer Brigade 150 squad coming in at number 9. This is a German army battle of the bulge option where it has some disruptive rules and it's Germans kind of dressed as Americans or another nation. They have one bar. And in this case, the regulars are 13 points. The veteran are 17 points. And this one along with the next one do have some disruptive rules where that extra point is justifiable. So they're perfectly fine in that case if that's kind of the the trend that Warlord wants to set. And here we have the forward scout team with Australia in the New Guinea book. Those have forward deploy in SMGs. Regulars are 14 points. Veterans are 18.33 points per man. And again, these guys and the previous ones with the incognito rules have extra rules where the points are justifiable. The Soviet Lend-Lease in the armies of Soviet Union mentions a jeep or a seep. And the seep is actually a vehicle that was used in World War II. It was the amphibious version of the jeep. But there's no entry for this. Uh, if you can find it, give me a holler. I have no clue where the seep supposedly exists. Are we just supposed to make up rules? Hey, this is a jeep, plus five points, and it has the amphibious rule. And this is where we're supposed to use that from just implications of the Soviet lend lease rule. The other thing that I dislike about the Lend-Lease uh, rules here is the Bren Carrier. And there's a lot of uh, language where Bren Carrier is used interchangeably with Universal Carrier, uh, especially like there's a Universal Carrier Late War that's used in one of the Italy Soft Underbelly books. Are you supposed to be able to take that as a Bren Carrier in that case? And, and that's caused some uh, discussions in a lot of the groups. So, uh, the the lend lease could be cleaned up a little bit, uh, especially if we go to a version three. IJA engineers the, for the Japanese army in Mariana and Palau, there was an errata that actually removes the flamethrower option for the inexperienced. But the New Guinea book, which has the exact same entry, doesn't. Inexperienced in that case may have the flamethrower, and in fact, it's the only case where an inexperienced um, engineer squad can have the flamethrower. The Free French sniper team is still at fifty two points. If I recall correctly, in either the March or the September 2022 errata, Warlord came out and started changing the price of all of the snipers. Oh, we want these to all be standardized, and normalized at 50 points each. The armies of the United States got updated. France and the Allies for the Partisans got updated. But the Battle of the Bulge Free French one's still 52 points. Is that because they both have rifles? Um, I don't know. Is that something they just overlooked? The Maltier versus the Half-Track Truck. You've heard me talk about this one. It's a big pet peeve of mine, but in Armies of Germany, the Maltier Half-Track is a 44-point unit, Transport 12, may add the MMG for 15 points. In Armies of Soviet Union, the Half-Track Truck is 44 points for Transport 12, may add MMG for 10 points. Again, these are both Half-Tracks. They both have the exact same rules. They are functionally the same. The Soviet Union one should either be decreased to an LMG or increased to 15 points if it is supposed to be an MMG. In that way, it can account for the game discrepancies. And, and these are the types of things that I really look for in this uh, review. Before I go into the top three, I wanted to give some honorable mentions to the anti-tank teams. Those are really hard to evaluate in this case. Uh, the German Panzers of Store Truppen, 15 points for regular, 19 and a half points for veteran. And similarly, the Japanese improvised anti-tank team, 12 points regular, 16 points veteran. Partisan Molotov anti-tank squad. You got those same extra points each step going on. Soviet dog mines anti-tank team. And lastly, the tank hunters anti-tank team, which are 
phenomenal. I don't know why more people don't use those. It blows my mind that the um, Japanese improvised anti tank team gets the, the AT grenades for that one point and have forward deploy and things like that. But I, I think this trend is good because this, this shows some consistency. Hey, if we're getting higher veterancy on anti tank teams when they have that extra. Uh, for deploy or when they have extra rules on them it's justifiable that they cost an extra so i wouldn't actually call this one discrepancy as more of a trend and something that i'd like to see them adhere to a little bit more although it does seem odd that the panzers of store troop and is above that trend coming in at number three we have the polish motorbike section and this is found in the errata but the regulars are 15 points per veteran are some random number above 19 uh, sure, I get they've said they round by the five-point thing, but if you're adding men to the group, it should be pretty easy. Each man costs this much, and that's been the case previously in a lot of the other books. Like, Why why can't you do that with this motorbike section? Why does it have to be, oh, now we're going to take a veteran? It's not uh, efficient in any army. It, it ends up being uh, a liability of points. Why can't you just have it without motorbikes? And hey, it's 10 points, 13 points for veteran. And then required to take motorbikes for five points each. Word it a little bit better so that it's actually competitively viable. Number two is the Bren carrier. Now this one I wouldn't say is a discrepancy, but uh, in the Great Button book, Army's a Great Button, it's 60 points for a regular, 7 plus armored carrier, transport 5, may add a Pintle LMG for 10 points. And it's got that other LMG on there. Now, this is a great platform for an armored carrier because the Bren carrier gets used. It's not overly used. It's it's spammed occasionally, but it usually has purposes. But let's take a, compare that to the 250-1 or Stroke 1 from Germany book, Armies of Germany Volume 2. 75 points for regular. It's the same 7-plus armored carrier with Transport 5. And sure, that one doesn't have the additional rules, but why is it 15 points more? It doesn't have turn on the spot. It's half track, sure. It's so it's a little faster, but that that shouldn't be fifteen points worth. There needs some to be some normalization there. And last but not least, uh, I'm pretty sure you all expected it: the Gurkhas. Um, in Armies of Great Britain book, this is the one unit that breaks this rule more than anything. It's five men for 70 points. All right, hey, 14 points per model. That's reasonable. It's 13 points for veterans, one point for tough blighter. But where's the scary blighters? This is a huge, powerful rule that comes in, and it's free. At least make it one point. Uh, get, give it something where it's not just pretty much auto-include. If you're considering Gurkhas, you're going to include that. A lot of times I see people, oh, well, in other nations, in order to get that kind of... Uh, close quarters combat power, you're going to split your uh, forces up and, and go flamethrowers. Okay, now in Britain, let's take those flamethrower points and spread that out upon the squad, and now we get Scary Blighter's Rule, which is just as powerful, if not more powerful, than having a flamethrower. We've got more guys and free rules, especially when Great Britain's rules work so well with them. All right, and that's all I have for today. Uh, leave a comment with any unit discrepancies that I may have missed, uh, changes you'd like to see, uh, things like that. All right, as always, have a wonderful day.